Empty products have been so kind of like annoying to me lately because I don't want to upload too many empty product videos in a row on my channel because I feel like they're kind of boring although I really like watching them so maybe they're not but I have a bunch of like collective empties I guess and then I have a bunch of skincare that I recently finished up that's what I'm gonna show you today I have a bunch of skincare that I recently finished up then at the end of the video I also have some things that I'm very very close to finishing up I would say within like the next week so I just thought I would throw them in so that I don't have to save them for the next round can already tell it's gonna be very humid today like as soon as you do your hair it starts to frizz and it's just Anyway, I feel like I'm super awkward this morning. <laughs> what would an empty products video be without Desert Essence Organic Jojoba Oil? I have two of these in here, I think just two. Yeah, I have another one of these right now. This is my go-to for removing eye makeup and kind of my first, this is like the first step in my evening skincare routine. I'll wet two organic cotton rounds, hold them over my eyes, take off my eye makeup, my eyebrow makeup, take off my eyebrows, doesn't that sound creepy? Take off my eyebrow makeup and then go in with a balm cleanser, but indispensable step for me, I'll take this on travel and use it as a all-purpose moisturizer and I get it on Vitacost and I have been using this for years. I have four packs of makeup wipes. Which I think that these are really quite old. In fact, I've started using makeup wipes less for whatever reason. I haven't really been going to the gym as much lately, so that might be part of it. I have three packs of the Bloom Naturals Daily Cleansing and Makeup Remover Towelettes. These are the ones for dry and sensitive skin. So I have three packs of those, and then I had decided to try something different, I guess. This was a long time ago. These are the Acure Unscented Argan Oil Cleansing Towelettes. I remember not loving these, but I have to say I don't remember super in depth, but I don't think I would buy these ones again. These are the ones I always go for, but it's taking me like a couple months now to get through a pack. I'll basically reach for these if I'm too lazy to use a warm washcloth to remove a balm cleanser, or if I've been at the gym and I just want to do a quick, quick swipe. Although truthfully, I've been, even after going to the gym, if I'm wearing like tinted moisturizer, I'll use the Osmia Black clay bar soap. I always keep a sliver of that in the shower and I'll just use that to wash my face after the gym. So it's less wasteful, I guess. But these are nice for travel as well. And I am doing some traveling coming up. So. It looks like I have several toners. This is a very manageable empty products video because <laughs> I can see everything laid out. So these are all the toners that I've finished recently. And actually I'll throw in the the one that's almost done too. I like to kind of compartmentalize. <laughs> Just makes it easier to talk about, I think. So the two smaller ones are an Evan Healy Douglas Fur Facial Tonic Hydrosol. My friend Kelly sent me this and I, what I used this for was to, usually in the morning when I'm doing my makeup, I'll wet a makeup sponge, Beauty Blender or the Real Technique sponge. And then I, I, I don't know, it kind of like the moisture sort of evaporates before I end up doing my makeup. And I'll use this to kind of re-dampen a beauty blender. And I actually have another full size of this happening in my life. Another friend of mine, Lauren, sent me a full size of this. And I, I like this one. I wouldn't say it's like my favorite Evan Healy Hydrosol. It's, it says deep forest in a bottle. So if you like kind of woodsier scents, you might like this. But I don't know if I would go out of my way to purchase this one, I guess. I like the lavender one, I think the best of all the Evan Healy Hydrosols I've tried, which is actually, is that what this is? Yeah. So I have a full size of the Evan Healy Lavender Facial Tonic Hydrosol. This was a gift from another friend. All the friends I mentioned are actually viewers and people that watch my videos and are just so kind and generous and end up sending me things and I love you for it. Thank you. I really, this is probably my favorite Evan Healy Hydrosol. It doesn't smell like traditional lavender at all. I, I think this has even been in a in a previous favorites video. It's a very creamy smelling lavender and it's it's really nice. So even if you're lavender averse, you might like the Evan Healy Lavender Hydrosol. Okay, then this is the Josh Rosebrook Hydrating Accelerator. This is like a very, very popular product. I feel a lot of people like it. I loved it. Yeah, it's um, a unique smelling hydrosol. It's very sweet, sort of vanilla marshmallow cupcake reminiscent, but all natural, not synthetic in that regard. 
but it's very lovely. I think the other reason I really liked this is because the pump deployed an exceptionally fine mist, like literally like micro mist. It was crazy. I'm dealing with some other toners right now that while I like the formulation, <laughs> yeah, there's so many double entendres that could be uh, applied to what I'm about to say, but they just really like squirt out way too intensely and like in a very intense stream, whereas this was just like literally a micro mist. That's the best way I can describe it. So I kind of actually might sterilize this bottle and use it for other things because I liked the mist uh, deployment so much, but the actual product is also beautiful. So I highly recommend this, especially for dry skin. It just, it seemed to work really well when my skin was much more dry. So really raving about this one. I'm so worried about my hair looking frizzy. Why am I being so vain? This is the Laurel Whole Plant Organics Facial Elixir. That's what they call their toner, I guess, for normal to mature skin. I liked this. I don't think I liked it enough to purchase a full size of it. I don't, frankly, don't even really remember it that well. Yeah, I guess it was nice. Oh, vaguely remembering now. Reminds me of the Kahina Toning Mist. It has a quite a prominent rose smell, but not synthetic rose, kind of the eco, all natural rose smell. Yeah, the first ingredient is rose hydrosol. Really nice, but not really too distinctive. And I would say I personally prefer the performance of the Josh Rosebrook. I use them not just in skincare. I basically like I'm using them throughout the day. Uh, I keep an Evan Healy Hydrosol at work. I'll spray them pretty much like all the time. I'm just kind of obsessed because I, and I, I that's a hab holdover habit from when my skin was really dry. My skin has changed completely in the last year. It's normal. Like I just, I don't know what else to say about it. My skin is very, very normal. And even more so lately, it's just requiring very, very little product. So I'm kind of like just letting it do its thing. Um, and then the one that's not quite fully an empty, but very, very close is the RL Linden and Company Thousand Petal Beautifying Mist. This was, I think, in my last favorites video because I was realizing as I'm nearing the end of it, how much I really, really like it. And I do, it's super floral and I'm not normally a super floral person, but I love this product. It took me forever to get through it. And I've enjoyed it the entire time. I have not tired of it. Very similar to the Tata Harper Hydrating Floral Essence. That would, that's what I would liken this one to. I would actually say it's a perfectly fine toner to kind of get prep the skin for product, but I just didn't find it had as much moisturizing benefit as the Josh Rosebrook. I think because this one seems to stick on the skin a little bit more and I just felt that this one was a little bit more moisturizing. Both of these are exceptionally beautiful product experience wise, but for performance, I think this one ekes out a little bit ahead of this one, but I would repurchase both of these again for sure. So I was sort of debating whether or not I wanted, there's a couple of past beauty heroes um, items in here. I was debating whether I should save all the beauty heroes products I finish up for my beauty heroes retrospective, which I'm planning to do in September. It'll be a full year of me receiving those boxes from them. So I'm planning to do a retrospective review of all 12 months that I don't even know how I'm going to tackle that video. I'm going to have to be like super snappy, but there are a couple, um, smaller empty beauty heroes things in here. I'll just mention them quickly, I guess, because they're in here and I've already told you. So an Infior Lustra is in here. I am so obsessed with this product. I actually have two others because friends of mine, people that watch my videos have, this didn't work out for them. This seemed to break some people out. My skin is really not that sensitive or reactive, so I tend to not have issues with that, but I am still using this because I have what other people have gifted me and I love it. I use this probably every other night. I'll do my Infior method of cleansing and then the other night I'll do um, a balm cleanser and then usually a light mask like the petal or something. This is the True Nature Botanicals Pacific Face Oil. I absolutely loved this. I was sad when it ran out. Um, and sort of, I'll talk about it alongside the Osmia Organics Nectar Vital Rose Drops. I really liked this too, reminded me a lot of the Moon Face Oil. Very high quality, but I liked the True Nature Botanicals one better. I felt that the True Nature Botanicals one was more luxe, more, a little bit more refined, a little bit more complex, I guess. But I thought that this was very, very nice as well. So if I, if you had to ask me to pick a favorite 
the Tree Nature Botanicals was I liked slightly better. I would use these, both of these kind of during the day and at night. My skincare routine is like sort of haphazard. I'm always testing out so many products. And then this is the Skin Owl Heroic Helichrysum Beauty Steam. This was like a one-time steam that I really enjoyed. I need to make more time to do like dedicated facial steam and mask because it's like, it's so worth it. Um, and this was a very, very nice one. My only other experience with facial steams have been the La Bella Figura facial steams that come in like little tea bags and yeah. I liked that these were loose and I just dumped them into a pot and did the steam. I have a video on that. I'll link it for you. I have a couple masks. Wow, I can't even believe I used this. I guess I did. I don't actually like this product. Yeah, I must have. I think I tried it twice. This is the, I know, and it's totally like blasphemous to say I don't like a Mahalo product, but it's just because it doesn't do anything for me. I can't for the life of me figure out why either because this is a very popular product with people. It's the Pele mask and it's literally the only Mahalo product I've tried that does nothing for me. The best explanation I found is that my skin doesn't need any detoxing, I guess. That's what someone told me because this is sort of a detox mask to pull out impurities and I guess people that needs a deep clean pore extract do well with this but I used it several times and it just it made no discernible difference to my skin the petal the bean the vitality elixir like everything else from Mahalo indigo original balm like holy 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 grail but for some reason this is just has done zero for me this is the laurel honey enzyme mask this was forgettable, I guess. It was, ooh, I'm totally gonna reuse this container. I will say I love the Laurel packaging. It's very high quality, substantial, feels very nice. I mean, it, it's like, it was like a less effective version of the True Nature Botanicals Protein Exfoliating Mask. That's the same concept. Or in the same family as the Tata Harper Resurfacing Mask, they're enzymatic or chemical exfoliators would be similar to, I think that there's brands that do like a pineapple mask, like I think Kiehl's does one of those, and Body Deli I think might also do one. I just didn't find it really did anything for my skin, and also it was really unpleasant to use in the sense that it was just so sticky that I just didn't, I didn't enjoy the product experience of this all that much. I felt like, um, my, like my hair would get stuck in it, and I, w I could really only use it if I was getting in the shower and gonna wash my hair, and it was, Okay, I have two little eye, I don't know, three eye products. I finished up my Josh Rosebrook Oculus. Isn't that so impressive? I loved this. It lasted me about a year. This was actually, this product has a special place in my heart because it was the very first PR product from a brand I ever got. I ended up, there's like a story behind this. I'm just going to tell you quickly because it makes me happy. I started my channel in April two years ago, so what are we now? I think April 2014 I started my channel, I think. And then fast forward to that October, I went to my first event at Full Lane in Boston. It was the first time I met Rue from Short Small Sweet, and I think Andy, maybe Andy wasn't there, but it was a Josh Rosebrook event at Full Lane. Josh was super, super nice. I had very little experience with the brand. The Oculus had just launched, and he gave us these to try, and I remember like keeping it cool in the moment, and when I got home, I was like, oh my god, I just got like my first PR sample from a brand. I was so... This is like so nerdy, but it just made me like really like happy, I guess, that I got to try something and that I was gonna get to talk about it and experience it. And I took it all like very seriously. Anyway, long-winded way of saying, I think this is a beautiful product. I really felt like it made a lovely difference to my under eye area. It was light enough to use in the morning, rich enough to use at night, very multi-purpose. Love the applicator, love a rollerball eye serum. It's just perfection. Comparable products to this would be the Aster and Bay, which I have not tried, and that might, that's the only other eye rollerball that I'm aware of, and I, I personally really enjoy this application method, so I recommend this. It's pricey up front, but it lasts forever. Then this is the Laurel Eye Serum. All the Laurel products that you're seeing were also PR products from Nucia, that boutique. I did a whole video um, reviewing these. This was one of my more favorite 
items. I really liked this. And if this had been in a roller ball, like if the full size was in a roller ball, I would say it's um, competitive with the Josh Rosebrook. But I think the full size of this comes in a pipette dispenser. Totally impractical, in my opinion, for an eye serum to come like that. I remember someone said, oh, you could always put it in a roller ball. Like, no, I, like, I want the product to like be functional at the outset if I'm gonna pay like good money for it. Yeah, I did like the formula and I thought it was uh, very nicely moisturizing to the under eye region. And then I used a sample of the La Prairie Cellular Swiss Ice Crystal Eye Cream. In a previous favorites video, I thought it was beautiful. However, I do not think it's worth like $300, which is what a full size of this costs. I thought it was really nice, but I think it's stupid to pay that kind of money for an eye balm. I think it's actually pronounced La Prairie, or like I'm doing the intonation wrong. I've always said La Prairie, but I think it's La Prairie or something. I see other bloggers talk about this. I think a lot of them are given PR La Prairie products. I just think I would never really suggest that someone go out and spend their own hard-earned money on this kind of thing. I just I think that there's very high performing things more in the 50 to 150 dollar price range which is pricey but it's not as pricey as like 200 plus. Just my opinion. Okay nearing the end. Uh, these were some La Bella Figura products. Oh, I took these with me on my uh, holiday travels last year, I remember, and I used them when I was visiting my mom for the holidays. This is the La Bella Figura Hardine de Fleur Skin Revitalizer, and then the Aria Nighttime Recovery Treatment, and the Daily Elements Defense Free Radical Fighter. Um, nice, but not really remembering how much I liked them. The Aria, I'm actually, I have a couple other samples of this right now that someone gave me, so I'm, I just, I don't really like it. It smells very, very funky, which sometimes I don't mind, like with the Mahalo Vitality Elixir, but I don't think I like the Aria enough to use it for the smell, if that makes sense. Don't recall the Daily Elements Defense Oil at all. Sorry, I can't even like BS you with one. I don't remember it. I think I probably got like three days use out of this. And then the Hardin de Fleur Skin Revitalizer, I think was nice. I enjoy having travel size hydrosol so I don't have to lug like a big glass jar with me. In general, I do like La Bella Figure. I think they're a very beautiful product experience. However, I don't, I have not found them to be as visibly effective as Mahalo and Tata Harper for me personally. And those to me are all sort of in the same ballpark and sort of competitive products, I guess I would say. Okay, two more things. I'll save the best for last, or like a very, very nice product for last. This is a little sample of the Bioderma Sensibio H2O. I have this decanted into a little jar and I keep it in my, um, where I do my makeup. It's nice, I mostly will wet the end of a Q-tip with this and clean up the edges of liquid liner if I'm doing like a really dramatic flick or I need like a little help. Um, I'm not, I don't ever intend on using a micellar water with any regularity in my skincare routine, but I did enjoy kind of getting to try it. It's, I will say it's more effective than wetting a Q-tip with saliva. <laughs> and then the last empty today is a bio brand I adore and their face oils are just some of my favorites, It's this is the Uma Beauty Boosting Face Oil. I'm sorry, I'm obsessively touching my hair in this video and I, I'm sure it's really annoying. I had purchased, it came in a set of four and I ended up giving the others away as gifts and I kept one for myself. I have tried the Total Rejuvenation, which is a nighttime face oil and I love that one. And I think this is a daytime oil, the Beauty Boosting. I just, the quality of Uma face oils is insane. It's so, so, so luxe. It's like pure aromatherapy, just beautiful, and I felt like I really noticed visible results, just in terms of um, moisture retention, quality of the skin, evening out, all that kind of stuff. Just gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. Huge rave for Uma. I really, like, I need to just buck. I have so much skincare, but I just want to, like, buckle down and buy, like, a full-size bottle of Uma face oil for myself.
Oh my god, I just realized I'm like not even done. I'll mention these things really quickly because this video is long. I probably have two more washes with the Elizabeth Dean for One Love Organics Vitamin B Enzyme Cleansing Oil and Makeup Remover. This has been a favorite product of mine for years now. I think it was in my 2015 Best in Eco Beauty video. However, I'm like, at this point, I'm a little fatigued on it and I won't be repurchasing it anytime soon um, just because I, I'm in a very big like balm cleansing mood space. I, uh, I have the Stark Grapefruit Cleanse and Hydrate Balm. I really would like to get the Moss Balm, the Leilani Bless Balm. So I'm more into balms at the moment for makeup removal than this, but this is just an incredible multi-purpose flexible face cleanser because you can remove it with a warm washcloth you can wash it off in the shower it's just really great and i do recommend it i'm sure i'll buy it again at some point um this is the living libations cellular renewal affirming fluid my friend elizabeth gave me this last summer when she when i was visiting her and she was like do you want this i never use it so I've been kind of using it over the course of the year. I don't want to, like, it was fine. I wouldn't buy it for myself. I have weird, conflicted feelings on living libations, which I'm sure I'll get questions on. Maybe I'll do that. I don't know. I've sort of been thinking, too, about maybe doing a Q&A on my channel. It sounds like, at, and when I say it in my head, it sounds kind of, like, narcissistic. <laughs> like, let me do a Q&A, and you guys can just, like, ask me questions. But... Sometimes I feel like I get a lot of repeat questions and it kind of maybe might be nice to just tackle your questions in a video. So if you're interested in that, let me know and maybe like I'll do a call for questions at um, in a future video. I don't know, just like putting it out there. Yeah, so not much more to say about this. I just, it was eh, I guess. And then I, I think I'm probably going to end up just tossing this. It's There's maybe like a quarter of it. It's the... Andalou Naturals Deep Wrinkle Dermal Filler Age Defying. Andalou Naturals and Acure, they're just brands that I guess as I've got, you know, you get, you know, into your 30s, you get a little more like serious about your skincare. Um, I'm just willing to pay more for higher performing skincare. I've never had good success with Andalou, although I know people do, so I don't mean to hate on it. But um, yeah, this was like a glorified... Uh, like thick moisturizer I just I don't think that it's and it wasn't inexpensive so I personally can't recommend in anything from Andalou Naturals just because they haven't like done anything for me but I know people do like their stuff so okay now I think that that's all that I have for you thank you so much for watching this video is going to be long I have another big empty like collective empty products Thing. if you want to see that like let me know sometime soon would it be annoying to see a collective empty products video in a couple weeks after just seeing this I don't really know so let me know and I'm off to work hope you guys are having a great um, I think this will be my Sunday video so I hope you've had a great weekend and I'll see you in the next one bye